Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is November the 15th, 2021, and welcome to this evening's meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. We're glad to have you on board. Last week, uh, I announced a unique partnership with the West Shore Historical Society. And uh, we started uh, another step in that process on Saturday when the club sponsored a trip to Peace Church, which is one of the historical sites that are in the geographical jurisdiction of the West Shore Historical Society. We had about 20 members there, I would guess. And there were representatives, of course, from the uh, uh, Peace Church organization, as well as the West Shore Historical Society. And uh, the Historical Society provided uh, some uh, nice coffee and pastries. Uh, that was very nice. So we had a great time. I had the unique opportunity to be able to photograph inside the church. Uh, and they opened the shutters on the windows. So we had some ambient light. Uh, a lot of us running around inside getting some great pictures as well as outside. And uh, I'm happy to report that the rain held off until we left or were in the process of wrapping up and leaving. So uh, we, the trip committee has planned or is planning trips to several other historical sites. And the uh, goal is to capture pictures and uh, some of which you hopefully will be able to print and use in the exhibit, which will be held at the Mechanicsburg Art Center during the month of March. So the pictures will be due uh, the beginning of February. The dates are all outlined in the uh, handout that is available for download in uh, the follow-up to last week's meeting that I sent out on Tuesday, and we'll repeat that again tomorrow. Okay, so the uh, partnership with the West Shore Historical Society should be very interesting with the culmination in the print exhibit. Uh, next Monday, our good buddy Mike Donovan is going to do the image review. There is no theme. So I'll send out a reminder, but please make note uh, that the deadline is midnight Thursday to get your images in. Uh, and uh, you know, the philosophy is that an image review is like wide open. Submit anything uh, that you might be interested in getting uh, the, the, the critiquer's opinion on. And Mike will certainly give you an honest opinion. When we get to a competition, it's a little bit different in terms of, of the intent level there. There you want something with a wow factor and something that, that you think would you know, be your best work. Uh, an image review is not necessarily your best work, but something you want an opinion on. And you can then enter an image into a competition that has already been entered into an image review because you use the image review to get the, the comments and you might even rework it uh, and do a little more post work or whatever on it and get it ready for the uh, co upcoming competition. So that's the scoop. Uh, as always, there'll be a... Uh, <clears throat> follow-up email that will go out tomorrow morning. And uh, as has been our habit now for the last couple of months, we will post the recording of this meeting on YouTube. And that way it's available indefinitely uh, compared to the temporary posts that we uh, uh, had to make when we kept them on Zoom. So it'll be on YouTube and you can watch them anytime they are available for public consumption. Okay, guys, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Vice President Joe Farrell, who's going to talk to you about some upcoming events and, and introduce tonight's guest speaker. There you go, Joe. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, we do have an upcoming trip this coming Saturday to Gerhardt Machinery, and Eve Smith is here. Eve, can you tell us about the trip and how we should prepare and that kind of stuff? Uh, it's a great shoot. There's lots of rust. It's a whole, what they call a graveyard of Mack trucks. I believe there's eight acres of it, uh, all open. There's a couple lean-tos that uh, have some equipment in. It's fantastic. It will be cold, obviously, because you will be outside the whole time. And there are no bathrooms, so prepare for that. Okay. <laughs> but it's a great opportunity to get a lot of like gears, chains, trucks, all kinds of rust, fun stuff. Uh, Eve, what kind of lenses should they take, and should they take a tripod? Um, they probably don't need a tripod, <clears throat> but uh, I would take, if you have any prime or a zoom, you could take whichever you want. If you want to do some macro, you could do macro. Um, there's unlimited opportunity. Okay. Yeah, when we went the last time, I had a great time with my uh, fisheye lens. 
And uh, when you see the email with the uh, invitation to attend uh, Gerhardt Machinery Trip, uh, the pictures that I included there were mine, uh, and they were taken with the fisheye. Get some real interesting looks close up to the uh, the grill work of those cars and trucks. And, and he will be um, getting down low to the ground, so maybe one of those gardening pads or something he can kneel on would be helpful. Or heat pads, whichever, whatever. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Eve. Appreciate uh, that. I should say parking's right there, so if you take more equipment than you actually think you need, you can access it to your car. You don't have to carry it around with you. Okay, great. The uh, TRIPS committee had a meeting on uh, the other night, and we do have a lot of TRIPS coming up for the, uh, for the quarter that goes through uh, March of next year. And um, one thing that people ask all the time, or a number of times, is why don't we publish a, 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 a schedule in advance for a quarter? Well, based upon the variability of weather and uh, venues changing and new venues coming on board, we only do it post now for about maybe two weeks in advance. So, uh, so we don't, you don't expect those quarterly updates. But we do have one coming up here in December 5th. It's a Willing Springs, a luminary uh, shoot. And um, Julie Bale just had a full page uh, spread in Pennsylvania Magazine with an image she took there uh, I believe it was last year or year before last, wasn't it, Julie? Something like that. Yes. And uh, we're, we're going to the, as Dennis mentioned, some more of the uh, historic sites. We're going to Strasburg Railroad, Middle Creek for geese migration, and blah, blah, blah. We have a lot coming up, and one just came up this evening that we're looking at uh, adding to our list. Uh, so I can me, add that uh, when we do finalize that list of the upcoming uh, trips, I will update the uh, list of club activities and make that available for download. Yeah, but keep in mind it is subject to change always as we found out this summer. So <laughs> um, tonight's program is uh, Pete uh, LaRue is gonna be speaking and uh, reviewing the images that we took at our various railroad uh, trips that we had this particular uh, fall and late summer. And the reason why we're doing this, first of all, is Pete was kind enough to offer to do it for us. And we're gonna use it as a show and tell, and we're gonna learn how others approach exactly the same scenes, which is very instructive. You see, we, Pete did for us a class this past uh, summer here on Zoom with the club. And then we took a club trip up to East Broadtop Railroad. And then we took a club trip to Williams Grove for a live steam engine running, and that was really cool. And then we had the workshop up at East Broadtop Railroad, and now we have this final review, and this will bring to the um, termination of our train rides for a wow, I think. So um, I think, uh, is Jonathan Smith online with us right now? Jonathan? Yes, he is. Okay, Jonathan, do you wanna give a couple of words? Jonathan, Jonathan is with East Broadtop Railroad and was very instrumental in hosting or scouting trips or club trip and also arranging with uh, Pete and the West Shore Photography Club, the, uh, the workshop. So Jonathan, would you wanna say a couple words? Sure, uh, it's great to see you all again, even virtually. Um, I can't thank you all enough for coming down. You were the first photography club that the EBT Foundation hosted uh, in the new era of the East Broadtop Railroad. So uh, I think the West Shore will always hold a, a special place in my heart. We learned a lot having you all down. And um, I think that every time I walk into the machine shop complex every day or that I'm at work or every day that I bring in new groups of people, I see something new. Uh, they were uh, crazy enough to give me a key and I'm in there all the time. And I think you could spend a lifetime inside those buildings and not see everything. So I was really looking forward to tonight, uh, see all the different perspectives that are out there. Um, and there will be plenty more opportunities in the future to enjoy the East Broadtop. Um, I know you got to experience Steve down in William, uh, Steam down in Williams Grove and I'm, I'm kind of jealous of that. Obviously the East Broadtop is not quite full steam ahead. Uh, our first of steam locomotive restorations is still underway. We do not have an estimated date of completion for that project, but we do hope it'll be sometime early next year. Um, we have our Christmas and Coal Country event coming up over the next consec uh, three consecutive weekends after Thanksgiving. 
very close to full, but not full yet. So if you still want to take a train ride at these broad top, there's some seats available. And uh, we hope to be back in May of next year with excursion trains, special events, and hopefully host as many uh, photography clubs as we can. I loved it. And uh, thanks for having me here tonight. I can't wait to see what y'all had. Thanks, Jonathan. You were very helpful on all of our visits. We really appreciated that. That was great. Um, how we're going to work tonight is this way. We have nine members that submitted images, and that's about a total of 30. And not knowing exactly how much time we'll spend on each one, we're asking each um, member uh, to choose two of the images that are going to be brought up in Photo Mechanic by Pete. And we're going to uh, review those and talk about those. And then we'll do that for the next uh, submitter and the next submitter. And if time permits, we'll go back to the beginning and take another one or two from the, the person, the submitter, and then review those. So we're going to ask that we do not take questions as we go along, because we think that might bog us down a little bit. We're going to ask you to put those in chat, and then we will ask Pete those questions, either at an appropriate breaking time or at the end of the session. And before we turn it over to Pete, I'd like to give you a little bit of an introduction. As you may, if you came on early, you heard that Pete conducts many types of workshops. He does landscape workshops, um, the uh, railroad, uh, lighthouses, and um, there's a whole plethora of workshops that Pete does. He also has clients after he graduated from Temple University uh, and has a degree in the photography, video, and audio. He started, he, pro, he um, photographed for Homeland Security, the NFL, the NHL, the US Gymnastics, and it goes on and on and on, a list of commercial clients that he has photographed. And his, um, his workshops, the one that we had at East Broad Talk Rubber was absolutely magnificent. Every little thing that Pete could possibly do to make it happen for us, he did. And he didn't have the wind, was not uh, cooperating that night. So he would put off a smoke bomb and it would come all back in his face. And he was, Arr! and he just did a great job covering it all up and made it happen. So with that kind of an introduction, I'd like to introduce it. Uh, Pete LaRue. Pete, the session is all yours. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And again, it was my pleasure. And thank you to Jonathan for allowing us to host a photo workshop at the East Broad Top. And uh, Hopefully we get to do it again with you guys sometime next year with a live steam engine. Um, with that said, um, I have, as I said to Joe uh, during the photo workshop, I, th I thought it'd be cool to get us all together and take a look at some of the pictures everybody took and uh, see what everybody's eye caught differently. So with that said, um, let me exit out of here. And uh, so we have Julie first. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can. We can see it just fine. Julie, would you want to pick uh, your first of two pictures that we can bring up big and you can talk about it? Uh, oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I guess the first one there is fine. Okay. Can you guys see it big now? Not yet. There we go. Now we can. Okay. So there's, there's going to be a slight delay sometime. So uh, just let me know if you're not seeing what I may be talking about. So, uh, Julie, uh, what were your thoughts on I really like this picture, by the way. What, what were your thoughts and, and why did you compose it the way you did? Um, I guess, to be honest, the first, that was the first time I've ever been inside a roundhouse. So um, I was just very much impressed with the size of the engines. Um, and, and so I guess in this perspective, I like that the, the engine is right there, bold in your face. And then the guys are in the, in the background like that. So I wanted, I wanted the engine to be most prominent, but I didn't also, I also wanted to make sure that, um, that, that there was enough depth that you could still play, you know, clearly see the guys in the background doing what they do. Mm -hmm. I really, I really like how it all came out. Like your tone, black and white, contrasting. I, th I think it came out just well. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know a whole lot. I'm learning as I go about black and white. So this was, um, this was a, a the beginning of a learning curve for me for black and white. <laughs> so I wasn't. I, quite I think you nailed it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. There's no, a little delay good. there. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> All right. So if you wanted to bring up a second picture, which one would you want to bring up? Um, how about that? That's, Can you see all four there? What, yeah, yeah, the third one in there. Third one, okay. Yeah, try that one. Okay, you need to come up big. It's on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So this one was just um, when you were when you guys were pulling in the the engine there. Um, we weren't. It was just kind of like a spontaneous shot where I saw that the guy had his arms up like that, and I don't know. I I just kind of mm -hmm. like I like that um kind of a non-posed photo um mm -hmm. i know it's the, but i like that you can see his hands and and just implying the mm -hmm. movement coming in um right i just tried different and things for those who, i'm sorry go ahead. Go ahead. no no oh no I please gonna, go ahead. i was gonna say for those who are not there his hand gestures it's not like he's bringing in an airplane he's mm -hmm. actually bringing his hands to a closing gesture so as his hands come to a close, that's when the train has to stop. So it's pretty much a distance thing that he's visually showing the person in the rear who's pushing the engine in to come to a stop. So you caught him just as he was about to stop. But it is a, a very good live, you know, action shot. So um, but I like the composition and I like, you know, the whole ambiance of the whole picture. Um, any reason why you wanted to say with color versus black and white? Um, again, yeah, I didn't, I played around with different things. Um, it was just one of those decisions in the moment while I was editing, I, I, and when I was doing it, I would edit it and then go, oh no. And then I'd go back and do it all over again and oh no, do it again. So, and this was the last version I kind of ended up with. Um, I, I kind of just like the um i don't even know what the right word is um here i'm not even sure what the word is i just like the feel of that uh tone i guess mm -hmm. of the image oh they came up very well thanks <laughs> all right um let's go on to the next person we have uh, mary ellen Yes. All right. Would you like to select a picture? How about the second one? Start with that. Second one right here? Yeah. So me and uh, when me and Joe were having our test run today, we were actually curious where this picture came from. Uh -huh. That came <laughs> from Williams Grove. Um, okay. Now see, we th I would have swore it was East Broad Top because of the greens and the reds. So you fooled yeah. all of us. <laughs> all right. My job is done. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I kind of wandered around because you're know, waiting for them to, to get to, for the engine to get started there out at Williams Grove. And I was looking over at some of the cars. And mm -hmm. this is actually two cars together. And I'm, I'm one going into the other. And it just mm -hmm. it made me laugh to see a wicker chair in there kind mm -hmm. of an unusual chair but it made me so i i just mm -hmm. i just kind of like the colors and the the uh the, the the idea that there was this wicker chair in there and that little bit of that uh mm -hmm. wheel or whatever that head is on the side there so yeah i took this shot and, and i kept it in color because i like the colors mm -hmm. i like that red because it kind of jumps out at you Oh, it's definitely multi-layer and multi-colored layer too. Uh, for for reference, that wheel there, uh, when the train is stopped and they're parking the car by itself, you turn that wheel to manually put the brakes on, so it doesn't ah. roll away. And okay. then when it's uh, when you when this when a diesel or another train hooks up to it, you undo the brakes manually, and then the air brakes kick in, and now you're under the engine's control of brakes. So, hmm. just for reference. Okay. Yeah. Pete, cool. There was a question on this on this image, and that was, uh, Mary Eileen, did you use the dehaze filter on that, or some kind of an HDR function, or something? No, not on this one. No. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Which would be your second picture? How about number three? Number three. Okay. All right. So the 
page is not other fog picture the the, the yeah. fog smoke picture that gave us so much trouble yeah yeah so, um it was pretty funny because there for a while um in there uh in in the in the roundhouse at, in the evening later when um there, you were having trouble with that and it got really really smoky and i remember standing there going this is starting to feel like a Stephen King novel. <laughs> mm -hmm. All this stuff in there. Anyway, I, I it, it just made me laugh to see that. And this one I took, there was uh, the original, the, the unprocessed. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of, of it was kind of hazy, kind of light. Mm -hmm. And what I tried to do with this one is I'm, I'm trying to make the gentleman there, I, I, I you know, darken the other parts, but I wanted mm -hmm. to make him really light because I wanted mm -hmm. him to look like a ghost walking through. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, if that's could... that's. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a delay, and I thought you were finished talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I am finished. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right. So my only, I, I like the tones. I like the the contrast you have. My only one suggestion in the future is. You you clipped off most of the headlight here. Yeah. Um, if you if you were to reshoot this in the future, or if you have one slightly zoomed out, if you can include the headlight, um, that I would that would be my only critique with it. Um, it's kind of like if if when you shoot a person and you cut them off at their ankles, it's like why don't you just include the feet? It's kind of like a aesthetically pleasing type suggestion. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, I, I think it came out very well. So. Okay. I mean, Thank my you. only suggestion to you. But otherwise, I, I like the tone and the contrast of it. Thanks. All righty. No, no problem. So we have uh, Michael Donovan. Is Michael here? Yes. Yeah, um, let's do the last one first. Okay. My, um, my main effort here was to make the image look as old as the engine or mm -hmm. as old as the time that it was working in. Mm -hmm. So um, that was sort of my jumping off point was that I wanted it to look as though it was taken the day the thing started down the tracks on day one. Right. Um, there's three different layers on there. There's a kind of a, like a yellowish, which because I didn't want the cool colors, I wanted it warm, like the older, the older pictures, mm -hmm. almost like a right. sepia, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. There's also one with um, like the grit and the dirt, which you can especially see up on top, like the yeah, um, yeah. like the old wet plates kind of look. Mm -hmm. And then there's also there was one with just a really light dark border you can only mainly see it on the bottom and the top um, okay. so that it would look more like like an old sheet of paper is mm -hmm. so my my main thing i wanted was for it to look old now i thought about taking the electric wires out but mm -hmm. that's that's part of the scene really and, and i'm guessing even in the 20s it looked like this so I decided to let the wires in. I understand. Um, Jonathan, could you give us a little history? When did all those wires and telephone poles show up for, for reference? It, yeah, it would have been after the, the modernization era of the railroad began. So, I mean, it, it, the 20s is a pretty good estimate. I don't know an exact date, but uh, the railroad was kind of rejuvenating between 1910, 1920, 1925. So okay. I, I assume it was 2025. Okay. Would you well, suggest so to make it look more more authentic to remove them? Well, I mean, it depends on what era but, you're really looking for. Um, I know the railroad has told me, I'm sure Jonathan can back this up, is that they're looking at removing a lot of these wires and putting everything underground um, for... Yeah, historic purposes and just it just looks a lot nicer than having all these telephone poles everywhere um, some of the some of the poles sorry pete there's oh, a ahead, delay. Uh, some of the poles that were added later in the railroad's life in the 60s 70s and 80s will be removed um, the other thing i also mentioned with 
photos like this is that that locomotive wasn't at the railroad until like 1918. So you wouldn't be able to predate it before that anyway, because that locomotive itself wouldn't have been there before then. So. Okay, so it, a suggestion I could give you is if you wanted to try this a little differently, if you were to crop it horizontally and maybe crop just above the tip of the, um, the sand tower here, and then crop a little bit right, you know, maybe leave it where it is, but just crop that whole top off air because there's not much going on up here other than just some wires in the rooftop. That would really eliminate this whole upper third of just sky and wires, and it would really help focus in on the train, the side of the shed, and the gentleman throwing the switch stand there. Be yeah, a but, oh, that. but otherwise, I really, I really like the aging process that you gave. It has a really nice older slide film look to it. No. Thanks. Um, Dennis, excuse me. What would Pete. be your second? Pete, Pete, yeah. Excuse me, Dennis. I think can you mute everybody and then unmute what those that want to talk. I can hear people in the background talking. Uh, let's do the first one. I think. First one. Okay. Can you see it? Up uh, big. Yep, we're good. Right. Um, this was, like Julie, I was impressed with the sheer mass of of the engines. And I like the look in the roundhouse that, like a, like a sled dog almost, like they can't wait to get going and they want to get out of there and get moving. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used the, um, the HDR on this simply mm -hmm. because I didn't want the windows to explode and, and be the main focal point. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I thought about cutting out the bottom, but I like those rods there as, as like a foreground and then the middle ground and then the background kind of thing. Um, I also like the, um, the lines above and below the windows. But really what I liked was the fact that it looks like it wants to get the heck out of there. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean, all those windows. And it's kind of it's kind of cool when you walk on the outside of the building and look in, you can see all the engines through the window, kind of like the same thing. They just want to get out. Um, a suggestion for you, because, again, you I know you kind of touched on it. You had all that dead space there on the ground, but you wanted to keep the poles. If you were to drop a lot lower down on, I'm assuming you're standing for this. If you were to drop down on your knees and shoot lower, you would actually drop everything into a more level plane. The engine and the tracks would kind of even up with these bars here. Um, I, I often do that a lot in there. I'm usually shooting lower to kind of even everything out at the same plane, field so you avoid some of this. So, um, if you ever do go back in there and want to retry this shot, perhaps you could try shooting much lower to bring this and this kind of at the same level plane. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Will, will you be there to help me get back up? <laughs> um, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. thanks. I, I understand. I, yeah. It, it, it's just a suggestion. You, you had touched on it that you, you wanted to avoid this space in here. And that's really the only way you could avoid it. Otherwise, I mean, I, I like how you did it. The post-processing is very good and all the tones look good. All right. Thanks. No problem. All right. So we have Norbert Fry next. Is Norbert there? I'm here. All right. Norbert, which picture would you like to start with? Uh, let's uh, put uh, the very first one. All right. Right there. Okay. And then probably, oh, yes, that one right there. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, Pete, I want to thank you for uh, setting up this uh this, this program in order for us to do this uh, shoot, I was I was really uh, impressed how you helped everyone with giving a like a, a starting settings for their camera in order to uh, capture the shot that they were trying to get, and I, I was <laughs> very impressed with that. So anyway, that's that's one of these shots here. Uh, these, these two men uh, and and that lantern and that lamp really kind of caught my eye. With the smoke, mm -hmm. it looks almost kind of mystical, and mm -hmm. uh, and I I was kind of captured a mood of of kind of a mystery, kind of a mysterious mood, mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of my, my my whole idea here. So 
Oh, anyway. it, it came out very nice. I really like it. Very good. Yeah, very thank good. you. Yeah, it came out very good there. Um, yeah. like the black and whites, like the processing of it. Um, what what is this right here in the foreground? That, that is some bar. There's a big metal bar right there. And I don't know what that hmm. was. I don't know if it was like a shelf, maybe, or something right in there. And that kind of bothered me, but I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm just curious um because I, I i just happened to see it i guess you couldn't get around it or maybe there's i guess other photographers in the way so but yeah. i mean I, I, it doesn't bother me all that much so i think it came yeah. out pretty good I, I have this in color and actually the color i didn't like the color as well um matter of fact this uh the man that's in the left side there his mm -hmm. beard was so red <laughs> I, don't know how to it. It was, I almost had to tone it down it was almost over the board over the top you know yeah yeah uh, mike's got quite the red beard so yeah. uh oh my god he's, he's yeah. had it for he's had it for a good 15 years and he shaved it off for last halloween just so he could play carson wentz for halloween right. and nobody recognized him <laughs> so he's like, question, All right, throwing it right back hey pete let me ask you a question do you think that lantern should be toned down that or that light in that, that lantern you think that's too obvious or um maybe just a hair just a hair um maybe? Yeah, just a little bit, but I mean, I, I know the filament's very bright, and it's it's supposed to be bright. Um, yeah. Maybe the only thing I would actually suggest is is darkening the whole upper left side of the the oh. steam, okay. just to just so because when I look at the picture, my eyes thinking black and white, I'm always drawn to the brightest stuff first. So I see the lantern, then I see them, and then I come up into the lower left, and it's just white steam. It doesn't doesn't do all that much other than keep a frame and then the last thing you're kind of drawn to is the wheel so you mm -hmm. want to my suggestion would be to kind of create like a darker vignette and kind of maybe tone down the back end of the steam so that your eyes know all right don't go much further because there's nothing there come back in and see what else there is because otherwise you're just kind of going further and further trying to see what's back there at least that's my subconscious when looking at a black and white i'm kind of drawn to the what the brightest stuff first okay so Maybe give that a try. All right. Well, thank, All right. You. thank you for that. No, no problem. Pete, before you get off yes. that, there was a question. This might be a good time to answer it. Yes. On that particular yes. shot, what was the um, lighting situation like? How did you uh, like that? Was it backlit where the uh, steam is is nice and bright? So, so yeah, we had a we. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's right. Go ahead, Pete. No, I was gonna say. So we did have a light uh off to the side and the doorway in the back i assume was letting all the light in that kind of illuminated the back of the smoke but looking at my pictures i don't think the steam was that bright did you did you brighten these up a little bit or brighten no, the steam up not. a little bit no i did not all right all right, all right. um yeah yeah i i know we had a couple of lights different various areas and we had we had changed the lighting a couple different times or tweaked it a little bit to kind of give the lantern a little more um a little more presence so um my guessing that the light was off to the side still kind of lighting up the back and the back door was open, or i should say the the front door to the roundhouse was open so that could have been illuminating that as well um could have been but uh because because a couple of guys you'll see some pictures later where people shot from behind these two looking forward and there isn't much of a light source at that point. So it may have been changed in between where, when he shot it to when people went to the back. Okay. Thank you. No, no problem. All right. And which would you like you have your second picture with? How about number three? Okay. Why is that not going? Okay. Now, <laughs> I don't know why it's not bringing it up big. Believe it or not, what caught my eye here, I did do a little work back in this area, this top, that far right area there, that there's kind of a, um, where it's white looking over in here. There was some electric, yeah, right up to the very top up here, oh, okay. electrical wires coming across right there. And they right. were bothering me. Now, what caught my eye here was, here he had this man here, your your assistant here i want to call him and mm -hmm. back in the engine back here there's another this guy's looking out, out of the back here so what mm -hmm. i 
in, in my mind, it kind of created a triangle with the engine, that man, and that, and that person there. It kind of went like mm -hmm. this. And, uh, right. and I did remove down in the, in the foreground here, there were some big chunks, I don't know, chunks of coal or something. And mm -hmm. one of them was really large. And it really, it really kind of bothered me. So I did remove that. Right. But outside, no, I, of, pardon? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, but but outside of that, it was pretty basic. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you, you. I think you gave us. Matter of fact, I have a list here. I think you said start like F8, the, the 400 ISO, and that's where I was mm -hmm. starting at right here. With, it was just right here. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think it came out very good. I like your black and white post pro post processing. It's not too contrasting, not too you know flat. It, I think it looks very good. It has a very authentic 1940s uh, look to it um yeah. if i can make one suggestion yes um maybe just crop out this last this is my personal opinion just crop out this last window on the left um it, when i was in college my photography teacher always got on us for areas of the picture that didn't really bring much to to your main subject uh, he would just always consider it just a distraction um, cause you're looking at the train, you're looking at him, you see the guy on the right, and then you're going to come all the way to the left and just see a window. My suggestion would be maybe just crop out that last window. That way the focus becomes more about the train and the two guys with the, in the steam. I mean, that, that would be my only minor suggestion. Otherwise I think it looks really good. Well, let me ask you another question that if, if you were to crop that out, yes. would that make the front of the engine like it's not enough room, not going somewhere? You know what I mean? It's, it's tight up there in the front. Well, I understand where you're coming with the, the leading lines. Um, the, so the train's not going well. You we all know that the train wasn't moving. <laughs> and, and to any to any anyone who's in a rail fan or know in any railroad know how knows that the gentleman's throwing the switch, so the train's not moving to begin with. I understand where you're coming up with the leading line. Um, yeah. I think if you were to crop right at the edge, I'm, I'm putting my hand up to the screen now. I think if you were to crop right at the the edge of the white window, I okay. think that would be still fine because you don't even see the back of the engine. So it's not like you have more space in the back than the front. I think it still leaves you plenty of room um, for running room uh, or leading room, as you whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, give it a try if you like it, like it. If not, you know, you know, it's, I mean, it's your picture. Um, that would just be my, my suggestion. At least that's what I would do with it. We just okay. crop that last window out. So All right. but I, but I understand where you're coming from. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. So we have Joe's pictures. So Joe, which picture would you like to start with? I'm going to start with one on the far right, the one in color. All right. Is it up big? Okay. Yep, it is. And okay. um, thank you for bringing it up. I had uh, seen, I saw the scene inside the, uh, the shop. And what appealed to me was what I would call the leading line. If you look in the foreground, there's a scale that's movable. Well, that scale is between two large um, metal structures. And in there, you can see the, the wood floor takes a zigzag into the actual workshop. And I knew when I saw that, that I was going to work on that. So what I did was I darkened down a the, to some extent, the perimeter of, of the image and made sure that that stayed nice and bright. And then I went into the shop itself and I changed the, the temperature, uh, color temperature on the brush and made it a little bit more yellowish. And um, so I, and I brightened up the inside of the shop. So that's my focal point, that little section of it, whatever it was called, that was my, um, that was my focal point. And I remembered that when I did this one, that uh, I'm adverse to using like an F22 or anything like that. So I, I did a focus stack on that. I focused on the foreground, the middle ground and the background and took the three images and then combined them and made a focus stack out of that. And then I started to process the image. And for one person in particular in the audience whose name I will not mention, you'll notice that there's no fire extinguisher in there. So just for that purpose, I want to let that person know. But that's what I did. 
Um, I, I really like this picture a lot. I like that you didn't go black and white with it simply because everything has a very like same brownish tone all throughout, except where the light bulbs are that has more of an orange color. And I feel like the path really leads you into that room and, and the, the lights just kind of, you know, really draw you in even more. And I, I really like the tones and, and contrast of it. I, I think it looks really good. So I, I, I wouldn't change anything when I think it came out really good. Thank you. All right, let's try. What would you like to have for a second picture? How about the uh, steam down at Williams Grove? Uh, number two? Yep. Okay. And she's on the screen. This okay. one was, um, was a club trip. Uh, one of the uh, members suggested this. So we were down, scouted it out, and I met with the uh, folks uh, prior to and uh, told them we we're going to bring our photography group down. And then on the morning of, uh, we got there, some of us got there at 6 o'clock, 6.15, because having been to East Broad Top Railroad before, and how long it took it takes for, for that steam engine to get up to snuff, they have to really start it up very early in the morning. And so when they did that, I got to meet with the, the engineers and all the staff that was working there. There weren't that many, but they were there. And I told them what we were going to do and, and uh, said, when we get to a certain point, I says, you know, I'm going to do something with my hand. And would you let all that steam out so we could uh, get some good pictures? And that's what he did. He got to the crest of the hill, slowed it down a little bit. And then uh, gave it the goose for the uh, the brakes or whatever that is, and the smoke coming up, the steam coming up on top. So I got that shot, and I was happy with it. And that's what I did. I think it came out really good. I I like the tones and contrast of it all. Um, I think it came out pretty good. Um, I mean, and hopefully next year we'll be get we'll be able to get lots of shots like this at the East Broad Top once they get going. And, uh, and get some nice fall color with your pictures. So you, you were saying, Pete, that the, that the steam from a true steam engine versus the smoke bombs is quite a bit different. Can you tell us how that's different? So steam is steam evaporates. Um, the steam, when it comes out of the steam engine, it's a lot thicker. Um, it has just a different quality to it. It, it comes out thicker and then it evaporates very fastly. Um, Whereas the smoke from our smoke bombs, it's not nearly as thick, but it doesn't evaporate. It has to blow away. Um, so it, it, so when we're doing our smoke bombing, it, it will collect in one area and then not go anywhere. Um, whereas the steam, it, it would just it just comes out thicker, but evaporates. It's like a different quality to it. Um, when we do some of our silhouette shots with the live engines. At the bottom of the locomotive, in where the pistons are, the area comes out called the cylinder cocks. Uh, normally, that is um, if a steam engine starts to go, if any water or evaporation collects in there, that has to get blown out. Otherwise, it can jam up the piston and then break everything. So, uh, steam is driven in there to shoot all the excess water out. So, you get a great show of steam that comes out. Um, they usually do that when they're starting or at a slow speed. Once they get underway, that they'll shut that off. Um, and then smoke mixes with the with the steam and the smoke mix in the smoke stack, and that comes out. And then you have other vessels where the steam is coming out as well. Um, but for our silhouette shots, normally we get a lot more volume coming out of the steam engine on the sides to create our silhouette. Um, if we didn't have any wind, we would have gotten this the silhouette we wanted from the smoke bombs. The goal was to get a nice thick cloud of smoke to silhouette the reenactor we had. But unfortunately the wind just was going every direction that we didn't plan for. So we weren't able to get the volume that we had hoped for when we were next to the stone house. Um, in a no wind situation, the smoke bombs or the fog machines work much better. Cause it's like I said, it's thicker, but it doesn't evaporate. So you have to put a lot in there to kind of create that effect. So um, to create the effect that we wanted for a silhouette, it may only take five seconds of the cylinder cock open, and the engineer can easily turn that on and off and you know, instant picture. Um, when we were setting up that picture, um, most of the people probably remember, I walked around with my cell phone and showed them the sample picture that we were going for. Um, and I had done that way back in 2010, 
Um, and the steam engine just opened up its cylinder cocks for about five to 10 seconds, blew out a whole bunch of steam and the gentleman walked through and I hit it with one flash and that's what I got. So it working with the smoke bombs with a dead engine, it's, it's the best thing you can try to do when you don't have any steam to work with. But once the steam engine gets going and we have a lot more volume of steam and then evaporates quickly, your picture all of a sudden appears and you got about 10, 15 seconds, then it disappears again. Well, you can just keep on recycling the steam in and out to, to get your shot as opposed to us having to keep throwing smoke bombs and getting frustrated at it. So thanks, Pete. No, no problem. All right. So let's start with uh, Mike Lackley or Mac. Is it Lackey? Yeah, Lackey. Is yeah, Mike here? Yep. How's it going? Right. Um, Pretty good, I'm Mike. Just start with the second one. Okay. Um. Yeah, that was definitely the uh, the shot that I was waiting for. Um, I thought it was lit really well. Um, I kind of went with a longer shutter just to kind of hope that the smoke would kind of fill up more of the frame. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want to see any of the buildings in the background. Um, obviously, the one mm -hmm. in the foreground is, to me, kind of part of the image. Um, as far as the color grading goes, I was just being kind of experimental with that. Um, in mm -hmm. Lightroom, I color corrected as I normally would. And then when I was doing my touch-ups in Photoshop, I just put a, uh, a sepia filter over it. So. Mm -hmm kind of gives it kind of an old timey look with sort of a modern twist i guess i don't know just just sort of no, I, I, like that. no I, I like it. it it's definitely different i mean it, it's definitely it, other than the word different i mean I, I i think it works it's not a crazy filter color it's just more of a a golden warm tone to it and I, I think it came out pretty good cool. thanks um it, only my only suggestion would be I, I noticed in here I guess you can you see my mouse cursor yeah it, I noticed in here I, I guess you really tone this area down in here yeah. um yeah my original I did not like that but yes I did <laughs> it, did the did the applying of the filter cause that to go down or did you manually burn that down a little bit no, I, I burned that down a little bit okay any particular reason why you wanted to bring it down? Um, I thought it was really bright back there, and it kind of distracted mm -hmm. from the headlight on the engine on the locomotive. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the only reason why I really did that. Um, my original image is not that burned down, um, but when I submitted these, mm -hmm. I just did a little bit of retouching and definitely agree with you on that. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would suggest maybe take a look at it again, maybe brighten up just a little bit in the steam and then maybe brighten him up a little more so he stands okay. out a little more. Because, again, if you look at it in terms of brightness, you do get drawn to here, and then you come on over here, and then you come on over here. So, But if you want him to be a little bit more of your attention grabbers, maybe just brighten him up just a hair and, and just take a look at it. Okay. All right. All That's right. Good. And what would you – sorry, again? I just say it sounds good. Um, okay. My next one, I guess I'll go with the uh, third one. Third one, okay. So again, Can you I, see it, I really, Yep, we're good. Okay. I liked how it was lit. Um, I liked how uh, I don't know, it just shows two guys doing their job, and uh, just uh, the the only thing again. Um, the guy with the black hat, his face was really blowing out. So I did have some trouble with that as well. Mm -hmm. We 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 get on him for his very, very light skin. So don't worry. <laughs> You're not the first person to bring that up, don't. Um, I definitely I, I did a little uh dodging on the uh the two workers just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. Um mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of blacks and browns and, and darker tones. I kind of wanted to bring the uh the blues out in their clothes a little bit, um, skin mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's it with that one. All right. I think it came out really good. Um, if you're trying to do a a a, how did you go about desaturating 
but bring in the blues out. Um, again, I just, you know, I did my normal color correcting in, in Lightroom, brought it into Photoshop, and mm -hmm. really all I did is just use the dodge tool. Okay. On, on the, uh, the actors or the, the workers. Mm -hmm. Something you could try in the future if you're only trying to bring up one color. Um, if you go into um, image and then uh, you go into um, saturation, you can do an overall lower your saturation by maybe like 40, 50 percent and then go into only the blue and the cyan and then crank them up 50 percent. And that would really just bring out those two colors and but desaturate everything else. Um, maybe give that a try next time too. see if that gives you uh, any different results. Okay. Cool. I, I often do that myself if um if there's like a red lantern among everything else i'll kind of tone everything down but then crank the red back up to kind of bring that back instead of yeah. doing multiple layers you can do it all within that one filter all so, right all right. Yeah. all right so we'll skip down to it and for real real quick reference for those who are out who were not familiar with the picture that we were trying to replicate with all that steam. If you can give me one second, I'll pull it up just so you can see what we were trying for. Uh, Durango and Silverton. Do, 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 do. Where is it? This is what we were trying to replicate. Having the steam shoot out and then the, you have a silhouette of a, of a person coming through, or in this case, it would have been a guy with a lantern. But we just couldn't get the volume of steam to just work with what we had it was just blown forward or backward. It just would not sit still the way we had wanted it. So I, I just wanted to show a reference picture of what we were attempting, but could not pull off, unfortunately. All right, so Frank, is Frank here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Frank, which picture would you like? Um, probably number three. Number three. Number three. All right. Um, the easiest thing I can say on that is uh, I captured the the conversation going on there. It almost looked like it was time for a work break there, uh, and I focused that. Uh, um, that it was at least three images, so mm -hmm. that I could get that foreground of the machinery there. Uh, that really mm -hmm. me. Out of all the pictures that were submitted in this particular scene, I, I think this was the most unique because you included it. You shot from the side backish end of it and you included a foreground in it. I think it was different from what everyone else had submitted for this particular rang. And I, I really like how you went about it. You created like a, you know, they're among all the machines just taking their break. So I, I really appreciate this angle on it. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Well, I like it. It worked. Thanks. Yeah. What would your second picture be? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go with uh, the number one image. Uh, bring it in into the roundhouse. Okay. Um, really not much to and say here other than the fact that I really like the color that was in there, uh, the yellow hat, mm -hmm. the red E, uh, the wheelbarrow, uh, they just all added pieces to me. Uh, so I processed it to bring those things out. I, I, I really like it. I think it came out very well. Um, nothing's too hot. Nothing's too dark. I, I, I think it came out really well. I really like it. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you. All right, Edmund. Is Edmund there? Do we have Edmund there? Yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, can, we can try number one. Number one, okay. Yep. All right. And um, 
what I wanted on, on this was to get separation between the guy and the train so he wasn't, the train wasn't behind him. And then he was mm -hmm. framed just by the, the, the smoke. And mm -hmm. so that, that's where the point of interest is. And then the train is kind of like uh, the background setting, so to speak, but put, mm -hmm. put it in place. And yeah, I wanted to make it a, a, a fairly contrasty image. Mm -hmm. now, I noticed you, um, I mean, I, I, I see like you, you darkened him down. Um, I noticed you darkened parts of the steam engine, but not parts of the front of it. What, what was your, your thought process when you were doing your dodging and burning on this? Um, I can't totally remember, but I know that what... Um, I certainly wanted to bring out uh, the face and the number. I, mm -hmm. I might have possibly gone a little bit too much on uh, my darks in that, mm -hmm. in that because I, at least in this image here, I don't know what it is like up. Um, it, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of detail in there, but I think mm -hmm. that what I was really, to me, the most important thing is the, the person. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree. I mean, trying to get him silhouetted against the steam and you definitely got it there. Um, what, what I'm, what kind of throws me off just a little bit is that there's a lot of, you have gray tones in the front of the boiler, but all of a sudden you got all this black in here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if you were, if you were to reprocess it, maybe bring some of those shadows back in here, just enough that you can see a little bit, but it's not pure black. Um, cause it, it's not a nighttime scene, but it, it starts to look like a nighttime scene because it's got so much black going on in here. Mm -hmm. Um, again, I understand you're, you were trying for that real contrasty mood. Um, but maybe if you were to try it again, maybe just bring some of those darker tones okay. back just a little bit and see, and see if you like it. All right. Well, uh, what's your next picture? Hmm. Uh, how about the, um, again, uh, the third one, let's do the third, third one. one. Yeah. All right. And, um, Can you see it big? yes. Okay. And, and, uh, the only thing I can, I can say about this other than what you see here is that since, we were playing around with fake smoke all the time. And when mm -hmm. I got there, there was no smoke coming out of the chimney of the train. I took another shot with smoke coming out of the smokestack and put it in there. Okay. So I, I felt that was fair enough since we're dealing with fake smoke anyway. But right. I, just, I kind of um, like the balance with the, the wheelbarrow, the train coming in, mm -hmm. uh, the house in the background. Uh, the mm -hmm. building, uh, the leading lines, um, the arches. Mm -hmm. well, I think it came out really good. Yeah, you definitely framed it well in there. And uh, yeah, the leading lines of the track definitely bring you right out to the steam engine. Alrighty. You have Sherry. Is Sherry there? Yep, I'm right here. All right, uh, Sherry, which, which would you like to start with? I'll probably start with the first one, I guess. Okay. How about the third one? Can I change? Oh, <laughs> you may phone in a lifeline and try number three. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I like to try to give it up like a, a painterly look. Mm -hmm. uh, try to create a mood. And I play mm -hmm. around with my colors. And a lot of times I try to mute, mute to colors in, in the background. And uh, mm -hmm. I do that by like adding like a color layer over it and mm -hmm. drawing it out a little bit. And I also add a black layer on top of everything and change the blend mode and turn that down to help bring out the blacks a little bit. Okay. So that's about, that's about it. Uh, no, I, I like the colors and the tones that you got going on here. Um, uh, I, I, I like the contrast, especially with him. He really pops in here, has a lot of detail and a lot of, there's a lot of grit and green to this whole picture. I, I really like that. Um, 
could I make a suggestion? Maybe you could try this later yes. in the future. What if you were to just make this a vertical right in here? My only suggestion for that is I see a wheel over here, but then you okay. have the space of not much going. I mean, you have a light up here, but it's not, there's all this space in here that's not unfortunately being used. Maybe, maybe if you were to just try it as a vertical right in here, that way, you know, everything in here is just front and center in the picture without right. anything back here or in here. That, that, that's just my suggestion. I think what um, I, would I have a tendency. Is, here. I was just trying to create a story. So when I saw all that, it's sort of, that's what I was thinking, but I will try the other way. Oh, no, no, I totally understand where you're coming from. I, I'm just, just my suggestion. I, I tend to crop in and shoot tight. That's just my particular okay. style. So I was just, just seeing the space and maybe would, you know, give that a try and see if you like it. All right. All right. And picture number two. Uh, how about the last one? All righty. My good friend, Dave. <laughs> All righty. Is it up big now? Um, what's that? Uh, did yeah, it come up big? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, I just tried to make it grungy looking, a little grungy looking, and mm -hmm. add a little bit of uh, clarity and topaz a little bit, just about 20% or so to give mm -hmm. it that, uh, like a different look. And then I try to downplay the background a little bit, but give enough details in the background that you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. No, I, I I really like this picture. It it came out really good. I like how he stands out from the rest of the picture, and uh, I I like the tones and the uh, the color cast that you have with it. I I think it looks really well. It's got a nice old film look to it. I I really like it. Thank you. Sometimes I add texture, but I can't remember if I did that or not to make them look you know like they're clothes to make a little more grungy. But I don't um, remember if I did that. I'm looking right now. I mean, up close. I mean, it does look like there's a bit more, a little bit of grain to it. Um, but I, I like it. I mean, it gives it the film look. That's what you're going for. Yeah. So I, I, I think it works just fine. I wouldn't change anything on it. Okay. Thank you. So, all right. So Joe, it's uh eight oh four. What are you thinking time wise? Well, I'm thinking that uh, Curtis Wilkie had submitted uh, some images. And we don't see it up here. Do let you me, give me a sec here? Okay. Let me um let me unshare the screen. How do I unshare here? Uh, let me just leave you in phone mechanic okay. right now. Okay. Let me go to my let me, let me try to find it. Is he the only person that, that's missing here? I believe so, unless somebody else can put the note in chat, but I think that's the only one. Uh, what's his name? Curtis Wilkie. Curtis, C U R. Let me see here. Curtis, if you're there, can you give Pete your email address if you wouldn't mind? It might be listed that way. I'm scrolling through here. Ready to do. do you remember what day he may have submitted it? Uh, Curtis, can you uh, help us on that? Yeah, I can. Just a moment. I'll open up my mail. Can you can you actually just resend them real quick? Like just hit a forward and resend. Yeah, Pete, while he's doing that, would you mind telling us a little bit about the post-processing uh, that you do on your images that's typical? Um, all right. So um, if I'm doing color processing, um, it, I may put a little bit of a warm cast or a cold cast, depending on the image. Um, I generally shoot with a minus three on the contrast on the camera. That way I can always add contrast later. Uh, but I'm, I'm a big proponent of trying to keep a lot of um uh tones in the black and white and then kind of subtracting them as i go whereas if it starts off real contrasty it's kind of hard to bring them back um especially with black and white um when i do black and whites i tend to add 
a little bit of a warm tone. Uh, okay. All right, I'll talk as I'm downloading Curtis's pictures here. I use the program Silver Effects Pro to do a lot of my um, black and white pictures. Um, I have a lot of presets, especially if I'm doing the World War II reenactments, uh, trying to create uh, film effects um, is a lot harder than you think if you're really trying to create um, authentic looking images. Um, sometimes if you're trying to add a lot of grit or, um, or just different casts. Um, for train stuff, I generally won't add too much grit to the picture. Um, but I definitely like to add a lot of contrast in the sky, especially for the nighttime stuff, because I want to have the images stand out. All right, so I think we got it here. You shoot raw or JPEG? I shoot all raw nowadays. Um, when I first started, I mean, I started off shooting film originally, um, but then I went, I went digital in 2003. And I shot a little bit four by five, but I, I went full digital by 2007, 2008. Um, but I shoot all color, all in raw. I'll never shoot black and white in the camera just because I want to be able to change that on my own. Right. So, all right. So we've got Curtis's pictures up here. Curtis, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Sorry about that, Curtis. I did not see an email from me at all. That's fine. So, all right. So which picture would you, like to, would you like to go with? Um, Let's do number two. Everybody else did. All right. Well, I mean, if you want to do something different, it's up to you. We'll start with two. Okay. All right. Uh, Pete, it's not on the screen. There it goes. Okay. Okay. Now we're okay. It's okay. But, okay. You there, Curtis? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So go ahead. What, what, what was your, your thought process behind here? You there? Yeah, anything I do different is probably go a little bit uh, lower at a lower angle. I think I was a little too too high on the shot. Um, and I added a sky replacement in the upper right there to add a little bit of something. That was okay. just awesome. Yeah, I know what you mean. It was just like a flat white sky that day or that that time of day. So. I mean, I mean, otherwise, I, I, I like how you have a lot of tone, a lot of, you know, full scale blacks to whites in there. And uh, it's got a lot of a lot of sharpness in there. Mm -hmm. What would your second picture be? Yeah, I see compositionally, uh, Curtis didn't leave nearly uh, as much space in front of the engine mm -hmm. as the one picture you talked about. Right. Uh, probably, uh, let's go with four. Number four, okay. Did it come up big? No, it didn't come up. There it goes. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, so weird how there's a delay. That delay is strange. Um, mm. Don't do a lot of black and white processing, so I tried to add a little more graininess to this. Mm -hmm. Um but um, I just liked uh, everything about it when I when I saw that uh, that shot. Yeah, nothing can beat a a large window on a cloudy day. You'll find a lot of portrait guys will do that, especially for weddings or you know brides looking out the window. They'll go all natural light because it's just one big giant soft light source coming in, and uh, I mean it, it it came out really good for him right there. So I, I like the, the the dark shadows everywhere else, and he frames himself pretty good. But then you can tell that he's got a he's got some machinery behind him. But I, I think it came out really good. Thank you. And uh, Pete, have... why don't we do one more for Curtis since we um, didn't get him in there? Maybe we can do one more for him for Curtis. Sure. Which one would you like to put in there, Curtis? Let's see. Uh, well, we can do number one. All right. I'm surprised no one submitted this other than you. <laughs> um, this one here, I, I I did this at the end when nobody was around because my shots I thought were too high up. So I, I dropped down to try and get some leading lines here with the rails. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I just kept waiting for the moon to get, uh, the clouds to get there so the um, moon could shine through. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that was actually my last shot of the night right there. It, it, I like it. It came out very well. It's got a nice composition. And I like how the clouds kind of wrap around it, kind of framing the moon there as opposed to just it just sitting up there all by itself. So the, the clouds up there really create like a, uh, you know, a whole nother layer and, and frame for the moon up there. It What's illuminating really good. This, the engine? Uh, my lights are on. Okay. Yeah, my hey, LED lights are on. Could you describe that lighting for us? How, how you set those up? What you use? So I use, um, for big setups like this, I use my giant single chip uh, LED lights that we have used the big reflector cones for. Um, when I light a lot of the trains, I tend to light the, the closer side a little bit backlit. That way you get shadows in a lot of the, the stuff that's in the front. That way you get a lot more blacks and whites. Whereas if we put all the lights right behind us, it would be just a big giant gray shape. So backlighting this gives a lot more dynamic and a lot more shadows. And then to light the nose up, we put lights on the opposite corner to kind of illuminate them there. And then what we did was we had placed some lights behind the engine. That way, when the smoke had gone up, it illuminated it even more. Because if you just light it from the front, it just looks like a gray haze. Whereas backlighting any kind of fog or smoke, it really brightens it up because of all the just backlighting of it. Yeah, it makes it glow. Mm hmm Maybe we could open it up for general questions from anybody in the audience. Um, I'll start off with one. How did you light the light, the headlight up there when the train is not operational? So we have these special LED, uh, special light bulbs. They're supposed to be used in your lamps at home for emergency uses. Uh, they have a little battery in there and whenever it loses power, but the circuit is still completed, the battery turns on. And uh, a friend of mine put, me on to them and we were talking about like this would work really well for a headlight in the steam engine because before we always had to hard wire them in there it had to run extension cords and it, it was a pain in the butt having to run wires hundreds of feet to anywhere to plug these light bulbs up whereas now it's, it's just a light bulb with a, a small little battery with inside the 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 body of the frame so we just we put a piece of tin foil on it to complete the circuit and we just shove it in there and while it's not nearly as bright as what the light bulb would have been for an active steam engine, um, it works for us. So um, normally when we have a live engine, we actually have them dim down the light bulb by turning down the dynamo. They essentially drop the voltage of it and uh, to dim it down. But for our purposes, the light bulbs that we're putting in there, that they work just as well. So okay. it's, it's been something we've been able to use in the last we've only been using it for about 14, 15 months. So it's a relatively new thing for us to have these battery powered uh, headlights as opposed to always having a hard wire. And that was a huge pain in the butt we had to come up. We had to try to logistically plan for it. So. Another question came up. When you have the uh, backlit uh, smoke or steam and mm -hmm. you have a darker train, how do you compensate for the blown up potential for blown out highlights there do you do a couple different images and combine them or what do you do so let me let me show you something here this is the same shot two different ways so this was the example we were trying to come up with for um what we we're trying to do at east broad top this is this has a light off to the side the right side pointing in and then there's a light in the back um, it took a couple of test shots to equally light up the steam as well as the front. Um, it, it comes down to as well how much volume of steam or in our case smoke there was. Because um, the thickness of the smoke is really going to determine how bright it is. Less smoke, it's going to get brighter. The thicker it is, it actually gets too dark. You won't see anybody in there. So this same shot, for the same scene, the light on the right did not fire creates a whole nother dynamic to it um, simply by turning off one light creates a whole different concept but if you notice he's a lot more sharper in this picture simply because the steam did not catch up to him just yet as opposed to uh, can you see the second picture now uh, no oh yeah we can right okay all right so you can see it's a lot blacker the front of the engine's not lit at all 
but the the gentleman in the smoke is a lot sharper because the smoke has not gotten to him yet just it's just the way the wind and everything's blowing whereas if we were to go to picture number one again um the steam has consumed him so he's not as not as dark now uh did picture number one come back up i keep forgetting about the delay okay okay another example would be if you can see picture number three of the gentleman climbing up it's it's kind of the same thing you have to just expose for the the steam that you got or the illumination of the steam that you have on hand you got to kind of exposed for it real fast and it's just everything else is going to have to turn really dark um it's it's just one of the difficulties when shooting with smoke and steam that you can illuminate your subjects as best as you can but the steam is going to do whatever it does um you can kind of plan it's going to be a general brightness but if it gets thicker or thinner or whatever way it's blowing it it you have to kind of comment it's going to be at least a stop stop and a half different any which direction, depending on where it's going and how thick it is. Um, if we were in a enclosed environment with just the fog machine or the smokestacks, it doesn't change very fast. Whereas not real steam, it gets thick and then it evaporates very fast. So it's you have to kind of plan on changing your exposure pretty quickly on the fly. You want to see if there's another steam shot here. All right, so here's another example. Um, this is again in Durango. Um, in theory, we could do something very similar to this in East Broadtop. The, this is actually where um, Jonathan used to work, was at Durango and Silverton, and we actually met each other in 2010 here. Um, their roundhouse, the steam locomotives face towards the turntable, whereas East Broadtop, they face away from the turntable. Um, but we could create the same scene at East Broadtop once more active engines become active. But the reason I wanted to show you this was this scene doesn't have any steam or smoke, but the engines are illuminated. And then once you add in steam, you put all your lights behind them and you eliminate all the smoke and steam going on. Okay. So, but it, it's one of those instances where you don't really know what the exposure is going to be until all the smoke and steam really gets in place and can kind of you have to just meter it real fast. Um, Cause it, it, it comes down to how thick it's going to be um, where it's moving. And it, it, there's a couple of variables. So it, it, hopefully that answers the question you were yes. asking how to expose for it. Yeah, and th- this, it was, this, this was just easier to give you the same picture with different smoke angles, as opposed to, you know, what we did at Eastbrook because it was kind of like the same thing repeated. Mm-hmm. Any other questions for Pete? Just speak up. Yes, Pete. How many smoke bombs did you go through? We went through. So we're using two different types. You're using the smoke sticks uh, for the side or the cylinder cocks or the sides of the steam engine, and then we're using our our what we call them volcano, like the saltpeter type stuff for the smoke stacks. We probably went through. I don't know, 20 or 30 for the smokestack. And then we probably went through a good, I'd say 30 or 40 of the smoke sticks to go through the uh the um the, the sides of the engines. So and it's it, it it it's really the only way to make these things really look like they're alive. Um yeah. any steam engine would normally put out at least a little bit of steam or smoke somewhere. Um, and we're trying to obviously make it look a little more dramatic for everybody if the steam engine was actually moving around or get ready to go and have a lot more life to it so um i mean we, we wish we could put a lot more smoke into these things but without damaging them or you know doing harm to them we we, we can't actually put fires in them and uh you know make it a non-stop smoking process so that would it, what makes the steam engine work is all the water and the steam in there if you were to set fire in there all you're going to do is warp the metal and we don't we don't want to do that Any other questions for Pete? Otherwise, I'm going to ask him to tell us a little bit about some of his workshops coming up briefly. Okay, Pete, could you tell us a little bit about some of the workshops that you have coming up here in the East Coast? Sure, sure. I'll, I'll just throw up the website that's up here. Um, 
So we got coming up a railroad photo shoot at the Conway Scenic Railroad. Uh, can you see the website? Yes, here? we can see it. Okay. The Conway Scenic is up in New Hampshire. Um, we got a, it's a, it's a standard gauge locomotive and uh, we're going to bring it out for two days out in the uh, New Hampshire mountains. And uh, you'll be active all day uh, doing what we call run buys where we get dropped off at a spot. It will back up and run past us a couple of times. Then we'll get picked back up and go to the next spot. Uh, so we got that going on. East Coast wise, uh, well, this is all West Coast. -wise. We're looking at doing another one of those air-to-air -air shoots in the spring down in Virginia Beach. Uh, this time we're going to use a Measure Schmidt and a Spitfire in a dogfight scenario. Um, that ought to be a lot of fun. Um, East Coast wise, we have some lighthouse trips coming up. Uh, and then hopefully later next year, we're hoping to be able to come back to the East Broad Top when uh, we got steam fired up. Um, just, you know, waiting on that test to come. Um, but it, with any steam restoration, and Jonathan can back this up, is just when you think you got it coming, you always find something else you got to fix on it, whether it's minor or major. And so you never want to really set a a date on when it's going to be done until you actually test fire it and get it moving around and see if there's any other little things that are wrong with it because these things are over 100 years old and anything could potentially you know be wrong with them and you want to they want to make sure that before they start promising these steam engines for you know public use that they're in you know ready to go shape you don't want to advertise it and then find out oh well, it's going to be another month delay because we found something and it's there's, there's no computer system that you can hook up to this. There's no, you know, software, you know, troubleshooting or anything like that to figure these things out. You have to literally climb in there, put it back together and move it and see if you can find something that's wrong with it. And it's just, you know, that hundred year old machinery, anything can go with them. And it's just, it's the, the beauty of them too. It's just good old American muscle locomotives. So Okay. Well, thank you, Pete. Um, there's no more questions. I want to thank you uh, for all the time and effort you put into this for us. It was very, very helpful tonight in your class and in the workshop that you did. We really appreciate it and thank you very much. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. And maybe we can work together on a different subject in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. Like maybe those lighthouses. So that's not too far away from us. Oh, no, not at all. In New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, there's plenty of lighthouses and I'm, I'm friends with a lot of those societies. So we could always pick a lighthouse or two. I can get a uh, lighthouse keeper dressed up and we can we can have some fun. We can definitely talk about that for the spring when it gets a little warmer. OK, sounds good. All right. OK, any uh, final closing remarks, Dennis? Uh, yes. Yeah. I want to thank Pete. That was great. Thank you very much. And uh, guys, hope to see you uh, at the Gerhardt Machinery on Saturday and online next Monday for Mike Donovan's Image Review. So let's give uh, Pete a nice round of applause, guys. You can unmute yourself if you want. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Good night. No problem. Thank you. Peter, are you there? Yeah, it looks like he uh, he disconnected. Wow. Okay. So my uh, next door neighbor works at the rail yard in East Pensboro. Yeah. And uh, oh, it might have been two months ago they had an employee get killed there. He fell into that pit. Oh my I, God! I saw in the pictures it goes down. Sure. Yeah. yeah it was an unfortunate accident. Uh, they were quite upset about that. Wow. Hello there, Big Frank. I see you're there, still on. Okay, so nice images tonight, Frank. So, oh, thanks. I wasn't able to unmute myself for the few seconds there. Uh, technology, oh. Frank. You know, I say that in jest because he was in IT for ages, for a really oh. <laughs> long, long, long time. You yeah. know. <laughs> so. Okay, nice presentation. That was good, Joe. That was very good. Yeah, I think everybody enjoyed it. We learned something too, just about composition. It wasn't just trains, you know? So yeah. that's good. Okay, guys, we'll see you. Yep, good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Bye